Hi, everybody. Welcome to Stamping with Melva. I'm Melva Peters, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in British Columbia, Canada. And you can find me online at stampingwithmelva.com. And today I wanted to show you how I made the really pretty uh, card featuring the uh, symbols of fortune. Actually, I think this, the bundle is called Crane of Fortune, but it's part of the Symbols of Fortune product suite that is available in the January to June mini catalog from Stampin' Up. This is my absolute favorite suite in the catalog. When I first saw this, I knew it was one that I absolutely had to have. Um, it's so many reasons. I really love the the um the crane um and just the the whole um asian kind of theme of it um but i also a uh, ginkgo is, i have a ginkgo leaf in my um my logo and so for me when i saw the ginkgo uh, leaves uh and the in the dyes i yeah, yeah it just definitely had to have it um it's really pretty and the colors are stunning um soft succulent calypso coral crumb cake um, and then it's got uh, the designer series paper has smoky slate and gold on the other side is specialty so so pretty you're gonna love this all right let me show you the card uh, that i'm going to show you how to make so this was one i actually did this as a series um, of uh, cards um, I showed them on a, a demonstrator event um, where I showed three different cards and how you could step it up. And so this one is the card that is the, the um, Avid Stamper. Um, it's got more layers on it. It's got some die cutting with these ginkgo leaves. Um, and so this is one, this was the, the Avid card. So I thought I'd show you how to make this one. So this is the Crane of Fortune stamp with this great crane, these chrysanthemums, some bamboo, some dragonflies, and then some really pretty sentiments. Oh, and then this little piece, which I think is ground to, to put underneath the, the crane. And then it has dies that you can cut out the chrysanthemum, the crane, um, the bamboo leaves, the dragonflies, and then has three extra dies that you can cut out some small ginkgo leaves, some bamboo, I assume that's bamboo, and then this great one that cuts out um, a bunch of ginkgo leaves all together. I've already gone ahead and cut that out um, of gold foil, which is gonna be the accent on my card. Okay. So let's bring in the supplies. So I have a piece of soft succulent. Let's bring my trimmer in, oops. So this is cut four and a quarter by 11 and I'm gonna score it at five and a half. I try to always score my cardstock. You just get a nicer fold when you actually score it than just trying to fold it in half. So when I score, this is the side I scored on and there's a little bit of an indent. I always say fold into the mountain and the mountain when you do this is the side that the opposite to what you scored on and it's got that raised, the raised line from scoring. So I always fold into that raised line. You get a better fold. Take your bone folder, give it a good burnish. So we've got that. Now I've got a piece of basic white cardstock that is cut four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm gonna do some stamping on this one. So I'm using Calypso Coral. And we're going to do some two stamps. Um, we're gonna stamp the flower in two different directions. So I'm gonna ink this up and I'm gonna stamp the flower kind of at an angle with the stem to the towards the right hand side. Uh, a, about oh three quarters of an inch so we'll put that there pretty flowers now i'm going to re-ink this and turn it over so now i've got my stem facing towards the left and i'm going to overlap it a little bit and stamp this again so now i've got my flowers and i didn't get that lined up very well but let's i'll turn it over um, I probably could have stamped it a little bit more aligned. Now I've got a piece of soft succulent that is cut one and 
uh, one and a quarter by four inches and a piece of this beautiful designer series paper. I've only got a little piece of it. This is the soft succulent and these great cranes. And the other side has got the these gold ginkgo. It's hard to, to cover that up because it is so beautiful. Just take your adhesive. I think I let my adhesive dry with the lid off. I did. Oh, that was not good. Okay. I'll have to get something. I'll take some uh, stamp and seal. You should always put your uh, lid back on your, your liquid adhesive um, right away. All right. So now my piece, this piece of designer series paper is one inch by four inches and it's going to go on the middle of this. So I'm not too worried about where I overlapped on my images when I stamped because that's what this piece is for. We're going to adhere this just down. We'll cover any of where I've overlapped with the stems. So it's just gonna, gonna go in the middle here. And now this piece will adhere to your card base. Make sure I have the the designer series paper going in the right direction. All right, isn't that pretty? Okay, now I've already gone ahead, as I said, and cut out this um, ginkgo leaf from gold foil. So I'm just gonna get it out of my die. I can, it's got all little pieces. So we'll just poke, there we go. That's starting to come out, there we go. Pull it out. Now, I need to get all the little gold little bits out. So that's where your take your pick tool comes in handy. Or you can use the, the sharp edge, sharp end of your paper snips. That works too. But these take your pick tools are, everybody needs at least one. I seem to have them all over the place because I'm always needing one. And so I have some on my, my, crafting table where I work most of the time. I have one sitting by my stamp and cut and emboss machine because I am always needing, needing one. It's kind of like glasses. I don't know. My, my mom and dad always, they only wore glasses for reading and they had to have multiple pairs of glasses because they, they, their glasses were always somewhere where they weren't and they needed a pair. So this is kind of like your take your pick tool. You always need one where you are. Okay. Pull that off. Oh. There we go. Isn't that pretty? This gold ginkgo leaf. I just love it. Okay. So now we're going to take and put this. Now I'm not going to worry. Oh, I've got one little piece here. About it being completely glued down. And I'm going to use um, some mini. Um, dimensionals and I'm going to use put the dimensionals on these kind of the larger part of the leaf and by using the mini ones they won't show I also use my take your pick tool because I find it really I find it hard to get these mini dimensionals off the the uh, sheet so I find it um, works really well just to use the use the the sharp end and then I can also use it to take the backings off. It might just be my fat fingers, I don't know, but I just find it hard to uh, to get the uh, these mini dimensionals. I don't have the same issue with the, the regular size dimensionals. But. Okay, so then this is just going to go on this side of the card. Pat that down. And then the last thing, um, and I forgot, realized I forgot a piece of basic white to do the inside of the card. So I'll have to do the inside of the card later. So the last piece I, thing that I need is I've got a scrap of soft succulent and I'm going to stamp this in Versamark because I'm gonna do some, uh, an embossed image. And so I'm just going to stamp my, my soft succulent using Versamark. And now I'm going to bring in my gold embossing powder. I keep my embossing powders in this big, these big plastic containers because I just find it easier to than the little jars. 
So then I can just get that. You can use plastic spoons or you can just, uh, there we go. So I've got that covered now, put that lid on. And I'm gonna bring in my heat tool. Hopefully this isn't too, too loud, but I'm just gonna heat this. So when you're heat embossing, remember to hold your heat tool over one spot on your cardstock. Don't move it around, but hold it over one spot until it heats up and you will start to see it melt. And I don't know if you can see that, probably not. But you will see it go from that dull matte finish to shiny. In this case, it's really easy to see with the gold. Some colors aren't quite as easy. There we go. And so this amazing magic happens when you get the with heat embossing. I'm just going to take my paper snips and I'm just going to cut this because I'm just going to fussy cut around this. I'm not, um, you can use a die, you can use uh, a punch, but I'm just going to take and just fussy cut. I'm not overly worried that it's perfectly, perfectly straight. And I'm now going to use regular size dimensionals to pop this up. I stagger my dimensionals when I'm putting them on so that one side doesn't kind of, it doesn't flop a little bit. Sometimes if you do it all in a line, you will find that it, it wobbles a little bit. So this will go on straight and I'm just gonna put this down here like that. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do are these really pretty, these are the polished dots embellishments that are part of the suite. They come in two colors and uh, two different sizes. So Calypso Coral, and they say it's very vanilla, but it's really hard to tell that it's very vanilla. Um, and I actually find this these go well. Um, it almost looks like uh, Blushing Bride or Petal Pink. So it goes well with any pinks. So I'm just gonna add some of these. And I'm gonna use the two different colors. There we go. So I've got three of the polished dots. And like I said, I forgot to bring a, a piece of basic white over to do the inside. So I will do that later. So there you go. Just a really pretty card and very easy to make um, to, with this. Oh, I forgot the ribbon. Gosh, can't forget the ribbon. Okay, so I've got some of this is the soft succulent ribbon that comes in. It's, it's satin ribbon. And I'm just going to take and I'm going to tie a bow with this ribbon. It's hard to get a little tiny bow with this ribbon. It just because of the size of it. Um, so I'm gonna try and tie it as small as I can get it, but that might be, well, let's fuss with it a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now I can take my ribbon scissors and just trim this. just so pretty ribbon and I'm just going to use a glue dot and adhere this to the center of the card just like that there we go now we're finished so definitely I love this card and that pop of the the calypso coral in behind just really makes the the whole card pop um, I will also post uh, in my blog. So all of the written instructions and measurements for this card are on my blog and the link to my blog will be underneath this video so you can go back to it. I will also put the link to the blog hop or the blog post I did when um, I shared the two other cards that were beginner and avid using the same kind of, um, well, the same uh, stamps um, and same color combinations. So I, you can see the card progress from a beginner simple stamping card through uh, a casual stamper without the, the die cuts through the Avid stamper where you start to add more and more layers and, and die cut layers. Um, so you can, you can follow through. I hope that you'll take the time to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you get notified when, when I post upcoming videos. If you're really interested in this um, stamp set, um, I'm part of an international, the International Creativity Abounds um, design team, and we are doing a stamp camp featuring 
the Symbols of Fortune suite at the end of April of 2022. So um, if you're interested in participating in that, um, there will be information on how you can do that. You purchase the suite from me and you will get a make and take kit of 13 projects using this uh, suite. Uh, and then you will also get access to an exclusive Facebook group where you will get another 13 bonus projects using the suite. So it's a really good deal. Um, if you're interested, the link will be underneath this video. Um, I hope you'll, you'll subscribe. If you are not in Canada and you're interested, we have part, members of the design team from the, the US, from the UK, and from Australia. So uh, if you aren't in Canada, but you're interested in this, I can put you in touch with someone who is part of the design team in those markets. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions as you're watching this video or you're over on my blog, um, just leave a comment and I will be sure to answer them and, and uh, help you with your card. Thanks everybody, happy stamping. Bye.